Hello, everybody. We're back for another uh, edition of Fish Talk. Uh, today, we're, we're going to talk about two sharks, basically, um, that commonly get confused when, like, tourists come to, I would, I'm going to use Southwest Florida as an example. So, uh, there is a uh, bonnet head shark, which what we're, is what we're going to talk about first. And um, this is the color of the shark. Um, keep in mind, I have a problem with my color vision, so I, I, I'm going to call this like a grayish in color. Um, some of the other names that it goes by are uh, bonnet shark and shovel nose shark. And the, uh, the range is all Florida coast, the Bahamas, and the Caribbean. And there's not a whole lot of information on this, so I'm just going to kind of like read what, what I have documented here, and then I'm going to... Uh, talk to you about my personal experience. So uh, the habitat sticks largely to the uh, shallows and is a common sight to many of the Floridians who fish speckled trout and other species on the flats, also runs channels and deep, deeper water. So, uh, <clears throat> so what I'm gonna tell you is uh, Basically, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm doing this video is because a lot of people will come visit Florida, all parts of Florida. I'm going to use Southwest Florida as the example. But the, these bonnet head sharks, they basically get, they're on average around, I would say, like 30 inches long. They can get a little bit longer, not very much longer, but... Um, People that often catch them say, oh, I caught a baby hammerhead. So uh, th th this is the purpose of this video. Um, if you can look here at, at this bonnet head shark's nose, that they're showing you this in a separate cutout picture, um, it's rounded. And that's that's kind of how it also gets the, uh, the name uh, shovel nose shark. <clears throat> but what... I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to continue to talk about more information on this uh, bonnet head. I'm going to tell you my personal experience, and then I'm going to move on, and we're going to talk about the hammerhead shark. All right, so the uh, bonnet head is a um, unmistakable because it's of its rounded or shovel-shaped head, not squared off like commonly uh, uh, rounded slightly rounded as the larger hammerheads. Uh, color is usually a very light gray, appearing almost white in the water. The size averages two to five pounds, occasionally tops uh, 10, 10 pounds. The world record is 26 pounds. All right, so uh, in case you haven't watched any of the previous videos, I, I'm taking this uh, this data, this information from an old publication that's probably over 10 years old. It's the uh, Sport Fish of Florida by the uh, uh, Florida Sportsman Series. So uh, anyway, so when I'm telling you there, you know, this is a world record, it, that, that may not be accurate. That's all I'm trying to tell you at this point. Uh, the food value is good. I'm going to finish reading these things, and I'm going to come back, circle around, talk to you more about the food value. Um, game qualities. A spunky little fighter on light gear, but not so tough as other kinds. Uh, tackle on baits. Light spinning, bait casting outfits. Any sort of uh, small live fish or cut bait. Uh, the fishing systems, drifting, and still fishing. So what I'm going to tell you about, about a lot of people do not know this about sharks. So um, I'm hoping I can educate you or, or somewhat. Um, when, when sharks get under duress or stress, whatever you want to call it, they, they, um, they urinate through their skin. So anywhere on their, their, their whole uh, surface, their whole body, they can uh, excrete urine. And it's just like a uh, defense mechanism for them. So um, basically, if you decide you're going to keep a bonnet head shark, you're pretty much going to have to bleed them out uh, quite rapidly. 
Uh, the, the sooner you bleed them out, the less uh, poisons or toxins you're going to have in the meat. <clears throat> and it's always recommended that uh, if you're going to steak these up, fillet them up, or however you're going to you know, prepare the meat, that uh, it's really good to uh, soak it in, in like a buttermilk. You can do that overnight, what have you, but it definitely uh, removes any uh, unpleasantry of taste from from the fillets and it, it's going to be a, a a real good product You're like it, it's telling you the food value is good but it, it actually it can be you know higher quality than good um but so i'm going to hit pause for one second then i'm going to put the next uh shark up on the board Okay, now we're going to talk about the uh, great hammerhead. I, as I'm realizing that this is not proper, properly aligned. Let me see if I can fix that real quick. Um, all right, so uh, now we're... Uh, let me zoom out. I didn't realize I had... All right, my bad. All right, we're back. We're back in the game, folks. All right, so now we're going to talk about the great hammerhead. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is... Um, obviously it's called the great hammerhead. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. My air conditioner just kicked on. I hope you don't hear that too much, but, uh, it's also called the, uh, giant hammerhead. And you can see the difference in color. And these two get very, very large. And, uh, the, your traditional hammerhead is going to have pretty much like a, uh, it's going to look like a, like a, uh, like a hammer, like a uh, like a mall, almost. If you were looking at it from this uh, aerial view, so you can see the difference. This is a rounded head; it's gray. This is more like a flat head. And uh, so, I'm going to just talk to you a little bit about the uh, some of the descriptives on the on the the great hammerhead, and then I'm going to tell you a little bit that I've learned through watching uh, some stuff uh, like on Shark Week and things of that nature. So uh, the, the range for the uh, hammerhead, all Florida, the Bahamas, and the Caribbean. The habitat is the, uh, the open sea, but often, too often, ventures close to shore, and especially likes the deep Gulf Coast passes when schools of big tarpon are present. So... <clears throat> I didn't want to jump ahead that quickly, but there's a place called Boca Grande. It's about, uh, I don't know, 35, 40 minutes north of where I'm located in, in South Fort Myers. And that, that is, they have a real, real deep cut there. And uh, people come from all over the world to, to catch tarpon. For whatever reason, the tarpon tend to congregate there in that real deep cut. And it's, you have to actually go, when you're fishing for those tarpon, you have to go in like a rotation. <clears throat> it's a lot of congestion, a lot of boats. So um, what happens, though, is the hammerheads, they do love to feast on the tarpon, and they'll stay down below, and then they'll come up and literally attack. Uh, they can hit like two, 300-pound tarpon and just just devour them like nothing like it's like a uh, like a munchkin you would get at dunkin donuts or something they just they just very very aggressive i would never want to fall in the water fishing at boca grand because these guys are just uh uh they're very very fierce predators and <clears throat> they don't care they just they're gonna they're, if, if they see something they want they're gonna take it and they're they're pretty much like one of the top dogs on the food chain when it comes to, um, you know, predators in, in salt water. But I will tell you, um, it's been a long, uh, you call it legend or uh, story. Let me, let me adjust the camera just a little bit, folks. I'm sorry. Um, when you watch Shark Week every year, it's usually the month of July, or I say Shark Week, Shark Month. Sometimes they change it. But um, there's, a, uh, there's one that's been... Uh, always mentioned on that series, there's a, uh, a giant hammerhead that they call uh, Hitler, uh, the great Hitler or something like that. But 
it's rumored that Hitler is between 14 to 16 feet long, and he has taken out a lot of tarpon, a lot of different predators, uh, you know, uh, or just ba- everybody's fearful of Hitler. And uh, so now let's let's get on talking about the rest of the description. I do encourage you when you get done with watching this video, uh, go watch some some videos of tarpon fishing in, in Boca Grande or uh Tarpon versus uh, shark at Boca Grande, and you, it'll it'll freak you out. It's like crazy. This is the reality of uh, uh, you know our our oceans, our waterways here in Florida. So anyway, so the uh, description. Now we're going to talk about the description of the great hammerhead. Uh, frequently identified by size alone, small ones can be distingu- distinguished from the scalloped hammerhead by the rather flat frontal edge of the head and by the rear edge of the pelvic fin, which is curved only in the great hammerhead. So I did not know that. So they're just kind of talking about the curvature here and it's darker tail, obviously. Um, you, You see this is obviously all gray, pretty much the same fin pattern, uh, but let, let's go on and uh, we're going to talk about the size. This is commonly runs more than 500 pounds and sometimes as much as 1,000 pounds, possibly can reach one ton. Florida and world record 1,280 pounds. So uh, once again, I'm just going to uh, reiterate that this was an older publication, at least 10 years old. And uh, at, at the time of this publication that I, I have repeatedly said is older, uh, that was the, the world record for Florida and, um, you know, the record for Florida and, and the world record. So uh, food value says uncertain. Um, I have not checked. I know there's a lot of restrictions uh, um with uh, FWC, which is the Florida Wildlife Commission, on what types of shark you can keep and things of that nature. There's a lot of uh, restrictions on sharks. So I'm just going to assume without any 100% uh, proof or knowledge that they they are a protected species. But uh, game qualities, monstrous size alone makes it an equally monstrous angling challenge. Tackle and baits. Only the heaviest sport gear stands much of a chance. 130-pound line, or at the least 80-pound, will make a large, fresh, dead bait fish. Will take a large, fresh, dead bait fish, but is more uh, easily hooked on oversized live bait. Uh, fishing systems, drifting, still fishing, and trolling. So. You can see there's quite a difference between the uh, the small bonnet head shark. It's like I said, it's you know generally like 30 inches in length, maybe three feet at tops. They're they're very aggressive, very fun to catch. It's great for kids fishing off the beach or in in a boat like in the uh, passes. The passes down here in Florida are what a lot of people refer to up north as inlets. So those are the uh, two differences of Uh, fish that commonly get confused. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Fish Talk, and I'll be talking to you another time, folks, and uh, peace out. Always smile.